Good morning, everybody. It is the Outdoor Cameraman Experience. I am Jess DiLorenzo with my co-host Jake Latondres, and we are Latondres Media Collective. It is episode 19. Uh, we have a great guest on today. We're going to go in a little bit different direction than we normally do. Uh, but um, just to catch up, Jake, how have you been? I've been well. I've been up in uh, Nebraska again. <laughs> uh, this time I switched gears and the last time you and I were there, we were, uh, we were bow hunting for, for bow. <laughs> <laughs> and this time I was up there, uh, leading a group of sponsors on a, a duck hunt on the Platte river with Prairie Rock Outfitters. And it went really, really well. We had, we had guys from Sitka and, and Tangle Free and Purina, uh, Pro Plan dog food and, Mo Marsh and and Winchester uh -huh. Winchester shotguns. We had some good people in camp and we did really well with the ducks. Awesome! The photos you guys are putting out were great. You guys, uh, I think you crushed it duck wise and photo wise. So I'm excited to see the rest of the stuff from that trip. Looks like you guys had a good time. Yeah, it was you know the the group. It's always cool when you get together with you know the right group of guys. They they take it seriously but not too seriously. And, you know, we share a, a group experience. I mean, duck hunting is a social event as it is. And having the right guys in camp uh, like Jim Ronquist and, and Blake Fisher and all the guys at RNT that were there, you know, sort of leading the way as well. It just just made it a made it a cool experience. I was I'm 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 getting back into the duck hunting scene all of a sudden and nice. and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, are you going to move up to Nebraska? I feel like you should at this point. <laughs> well, I'd have to move back. I live there. A lot of people don't know, but I lived there for 10 years and ran a, a duck hunting and goose hunting outfitting service on the Platte River near Lake McConaughey for many years. And then uh, things, I went through a little transition in life and sold my business out there, came back to Fort Collins, but uh, found a, a new fresh start with Prairie Rock and Ryan Livingston. So I'm, I'm thinking about uh, buying a cabin or renting a cabin up there to, to have to take my kids and family up there too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, so you want to go into a little bit about our guest today? Yeah. So today we have, we're, like you said, we're changing directions a little bit. We're still going to talk about, you know, the purpose of this project that I'm working on with, with Ramsey Russell, the owner of getducks.com. And we're going to talk about a project that he and I are working on together. Um, he's, he's, Ramsey went through a, 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 a an especially dramatic event in his life. He was in a, he was in an explosion, a propane explosion. And, it, and when he was 15 years old and it changed his life forever, it was a, a very dramatic scene. Um, he was, uh, you know, he was almost killed. In fact, the doctors told his family, his parents that he, probably wouldn't survive. And if he did, you know, he was going to lose some limbs and, and lots of, lots of mobility. And, you know, somehow he toughed through that, came out of that, 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 that event, but went into a dark, deep, dark hole in his life, emotionally, physically, all those things, if, you know, things that we can't even imagine as, as people that haven't experienced something like that. But then, you know, growing up in the South in Mississippi, you know, uh, Ramsey's a duck hunter and he found purpose and direction and, 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 and in the waterfowl world. And, you know, we're going to talk more about this, but, you know, he had a job uh, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service working for the, you know, the feds and he quit his job. He left all that behind because he felt this passion and pull towards the waterfowl and duck hunting, especially to start something. So he started getducks.com and US Hunt List and he has built a a brand and a business around booking hunts all over the world. And that gave us an opportunity to work on a, a special project that he and I are working on, which we're going to talk about once we bring him on the show. This is going to be a really cool, you know, really cool life life story. We're going to implement the outdoor cameraman experience into this, but this is really more about, you know, a life story and, and what Ramsey's direction and goals are now. Awesome. Well, without further ado, let's bring in uh, Ramsey Russell, the owner of uh, GetDucks.com and Hunt List. Here, here he is. U.S. Hunt List. U.S. Hunt List. How's it going? Hey, Ramsey. Ramsey. How y'all? 
Good. Thanks for joining us this morning and spending some time with us. Yeah. To hear to hear Jake explain, I think I'm fixing to go house shopping in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we're Ramsey and I are gonna be getting together uh I think December 14th through the 20th, something like that, up in Nebraska and on the Wyoming border. We're gonna be doing some duck hunting and it's gonna be integrated into this project that we're working on together. But I'm really looking forward to it because I just got back from there, as I just said. And uh, we had we had a big time with the ducks. I think I think yep. it's going to be good. Well, I'm leaving. I'm leaving Friday for Alaska. Going to scratch y'all some lifeless birds and get to go revisit one of my favorite places on Earth. We're going to shoot. Uh, we're going to target Barrow's Golden Eyes and uh, hopefully kill a few harlequins and other seabirds and uh, puddle ducks and whatever comes along. And then uh, I'm going to jump in a truck. That, I'm going to sleep in my bed about eight hours and jump in a truck and drive to meet you over in Nebraska and Wyoming. And then on the way back home after that, Forrest and I are going to stop by Kansas and pick up our Kansas outfitter. And uh, I told my wife, I'll be here hopefully for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should, you know, we should open this discussion up because, you know, you live to duck hunt. I mean, your whole life now uh, professionally and personally revolves around duck hunting and, and not just on a small scale, you know, you're not, you're not pigeonholed down in, you know, on some small marsh in Mississippi on the Delta down there. You have opened this thing up on a worldly, international, planet Earth scale, which is as massive as, as you can get without hunting on the moon or on another planet. And, um, you know, you've really you've really turned this into a, um, a direction in your life. But moving moving back, I'd really like to talk about you know, your life history, how this all occurred and why you got into this in the first place. Yeah. I, I've got to give credit to you and, and also to Rocky LaFleur for uh, this project we're working on, but also kind of tying into past with, with the present. I've got to give y'all both credit for that. Just the, the whole storytelling concept and everything else. Y'all inspired me to tell some of my past history. Uh, I've been telling, doing a weekly podcast on the end of the line podcast with Rocky, and, it, and it's really, it's really been a, a, a therapeutic and kind of it's helped me find my bearings and my direction with this project. You and I it led to the project. You and I are really working on it. gave it uh, it gave it the final push that it needed. And I'll say this: uh, William Faulkner, who I used to read, a great Southern author uh, from Mississippi, from Oxford, Mississippi, of all places, the home of Ole Miss, but. He once said the past isn't dead. In fact, it's not even past. And I think I think that's real important for everybody. You know, it, it, it's you know, we are a product of our past. And uh, and, and so uh, pursuant to telling this story on End of the Line podcast and I just I took a part of my life that I had. I had compartmentalized and put away in a box on a shelf in a dark room that we never go into. I, and, it, and it brought it all out and made me realize how that set me uh, onto this path of where I've ended up, you know, and, and we're on six, con we duck come on six continents. Our company motto is, is duck season somewhere. <laughs> and, you know, and to me, it, it is geographical, it's spatial, you know, because somewhere right now today in North America, anywhere in the Northern hemisphere, duck season is going in full swing. Goose season is starting to even wind down up in Canada in the Northern tier right now. Uh, as the weather comes, but but then it opens up into the whole southern hemisphere. 365 days a year when you wake up, and that brings in the temporal part. You know, you, you get up in the morning, you put on your shoes to go to the office, and you think to yourself, man, somebody is duck hunting today. And, uh, <laughs> Are you know, And the great part is being in the deep south. I hate, uh, man, I was born and raised in the deep south. Hot weather's part of it, but I spend 150, 200 days a year in nice duck season weather. And I love that part of it. Um, but yeah, you, know, it, you never you know, know the next phone call or the next, you never know what the next trip's going to bring. What's interesting about that is, you know, as a duck hunter, if you're truly emerged in the duck hunting culture, ever since the very first day you, you went duck hunting, whether you were three years old or 23 years old or whatever it was, the last day of duck season brings on this truly true sense of depression. And he, we, we've always talked about it. people talk about duck season depression. It starts today on the last season. 
And when you coined the hashtag, it's duck season somewhere, that brought back memories for me. And it really sort of lit this light in my head because it's like, hey, man, I mean, not to say you can just, you know, jump on a plane because it's 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 not, you know, it's not something you just do. Just jump on a plane and fly to Australia or Argentina or Azerbaijan or whatever to go duck hunting. You may have to save a little, but there's a sense of of. There's a there's a, a sense of savior there because it is duck season somewhere. Oh. It doesn't have to end. You can go somewhere and duck hunt year round, 365 days a year, and and I think that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool concept. So it, that's your that's your that's your like antidepressant for duck season, guys. It is one thing we like to say. The good old days are now. You know, everybody talks about the good old days back during your papa's time. My papa, my granddaddy could not have imagined getting on a plane and eight hours later waking up in duck season. They, they couldn't have, you couldn't have fathomed that back then. I don't think that it even existed back then, but it, but it does. And, and it's uh, the good old days are now, you know, I mean, we've got generals limits back, back in the sixties and seventies. My dad and granddad were shooting one or two mallards, depending on how it fell, maybe four mallards. Uh, man, the, 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 the seasons are, are generous. The, the limits are generous. And it's a whole great big world out there. And, and it's crazy the number of people we attract in, in the building of a brand. You know, we've got different type clients. We've got the clients that want to go on trigger pulling pull vacation down to Argentina or Mexico and just get to really just enjoy something different and pull the trigger a lot more than they can here. And then we've got guys that are real serious. And we start talking about going to Azerbaijan red crested poachers and indigenous poachers and tufted ducks, more Eurasian wigs than you've ever seen, all these Eurasian species, to include mallards and pintails and shovelers and gadwalls, and, and or king eiders up on the Barren Sea, or go down to Australia and shoot pink-eared ducks. You know, there's a, a list going around of 41 species, and myself and several others disagree. There's really 50 to 51 species in North America. If you start getting into the subspecies, but I warn people, like, well, I'm, I'm collecting the North American collect. I say, be careful because it's a real big world after that. <laughs> and it, it sucks you down. This, this, it just sucks you down. Like, like the deep mud in a marsh, it just pulls you in. And once you're in, you can't stop. You know, <laughs> when Mississippi duck season ends here the last Sunday, usually within three or four days or a week of that season, I'm on a plane to Mexico to join a month of clients down in Mexico and after that comes Azerbaijan. After that comes a little break for Russia or for turkeys. And after that comes the whole South American, Southern Pacific season. It never ends. It's duck season every single day of our lives. I'm picturing a box of shells in one hand and a pina colada in the other. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it's not far from that. In some of those places like in Rio Salado, when we went down to Argentina together, I mean, you know, let me let me back up before I say that, because one of the things that I found very interesting about traveling the world with you, Ramsey, is that while we don't speak the same language and there's some communication barrier, perhaps, in some countries and cultures around, when you dive, when you find the duck hunters in these areas, there's a common denominator that occurs like, like all the guys, you know, Glenn Fallis and, and Trent Lean and Paul Sharp in Australia or, or you know, you're, you're, you're the people you work with in, in Argentina, they're duck hunters and oh, they right. have the same exact passion that we have in North America. And one of the things that people might say is, well, I'm not really into hunting teals or I'm not really into going and shooting shovelers or whatever it is. But when you get down to it and you go out into the marsh and you duck hunt wherever you are, show you Argentina, Azerbaijan or whatever it is, when you get out there, there are there the ducks respond to your calls. They come into your decoys. It's all the same. And as a photographer or a filmmaker, I'm like in awe of all the new colors that I get to see on these ducks because they're freaking beautiful. I mean, I mean, I was I was totally mesmerized by all the duck species, particularly the pink ear duck in Australia and the Pacific black duck in Australia. Oh, those yeah. two, those 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 were like. I was, I was, I was sucked into it. <laughs> one, one thing I think, you know, one of my ambitions for this particular project, I've, I've hunted with feudal lords in Pakistan. I've hunted with uh, diesel mechanics down in Argentina. And, and one thing I really think 
we're going to demonstrate are like the universal truths of duck hunting because because the, the scale of of this project getducks.com hunting six continents you find that you find that that universal truth in duck hunting is you can put a a a billionaire and a and a firestone tire flipper and a good old boy and a billionaire you can put them in a duck blind and in that moment race, politics, religion, money, it doesn't matter. In those moments, for those hours, we're all just duck hunters. And I think what, as, as this storyline evolves, Life Short, Get Ducked, this series we're working on, I think there's going to be more surprising similarities than expected dissimilarities. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think you're going to see is that I wow, agree. duck hunting is duck hunting. It's the fundamentals of guys going out and interacting with the resource to shoot them. But also the, the 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 happiness and joy and the food and and it, you know take the duck camp experience and break it into ducks and food and laughs and good times and a few cocktails and man you 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 can take that experience and mimic it all over the world it's just it's different but it's not and that that's kind of the ambition is to show that that you know we duck hunters here in America I believe are the best and the most avid we've got the we've elevated all aspects of duck hunting to art form our ammo. Our, our camo, our equipment, our decoys, every single aspect of it is, is top of the food chain. But we're we're no more passionate about it than anybody else in the world that duck hunts. And and that's 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 going to be it's going to be a real interesting story as it unfolds. I think that's a really good point. That's a really good point. So let's dive in a little bit to uh, how you guys are developing this. You're developing a series um, about traveling all over duck hunting with the get um, What's going into this logistic wise? How did, how long and how did you guys develop this worldwide series? When, when Jake and I first met, we were talking about what we we're going to do. And I could, I could tell from having heard his own podcast testimonials and from seeing his work that he, he, he reflected kind of the value that I wanted to put into this project, it, the, the, the brand value, the appearance, the production value. He kind of got that. But I don't think Jake would expect him once we kind of said, OK, let's do this. I don't think he'd expect him to say, OK, great. Almost, we're going to Australia in three weeks. I got tickets coming to you. And, uh, I don't and that's think pretty he, much how it happened. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, you know, I've got a, I, I spend as many as 150 or 200 days out in the field and the logistics of it is is just it's what my business does is the travel and the flights and the details and the visas and the gun permits and yada yada. It's essentially an all inclusive booking agency to hunt worldwide. That's exactly what we do, but we're going to fold Jake into it, and the timeline is going to be just as we come to it the upcoming schedule. So for this year, we started with Australia, then we went to Argentina, and understand anybody listening there that cares that this isn't just a, a get duck hunt type hunt because. We're also going to utilize our U.S. hunt list partners uh, like like Prairie Rock and, and several others around the United States to, to look at United States hunt because there is such a diversity of, of hunting and hunting types and hunting habitats and conditions in America. I mean, we're blessed with it beyond beyond the pale. But then we're also going to do some public land hunts. Alaska is going to be 100 uh, percent do it yourself public land hunt coming to Mississippi. It's not it's a non-commercial hunt. We're going to be on private property. You know that that's not commercial, so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be something for everybody. It's gonna be something as close to home or as remote that everybody can relate to. But we've also got, I mean, right now there there's one company that has got places like Azerbaijan and Pakistan and Australia and Sweden, and 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 we're gonna show that even when we get down into the more familiar destinations such as Argentina. You know, we've been down there for 17 years and we just we realized real quick 10 years ago. The, the path most travel was not what our clients wanted. They wanted a genuine. High quality duck hunting experience that the average guy advertising Ducks Unlimited magazine was not delivering. So we went down there for months at a time and explored. And the place Jake and I went to Argentina this past year is you can't hardly get there from here. And, and when you get there, it's a 130 square mile marsh in the middle of nowhere. And, and it's just there in this part of the world that you never would know existed. And that's what, that's the kind of experiences we specialize in. But for the upcoming year so far, we've got uh, Australia and Argentina. 
Nebraska, Wyoming, Mississippi, Mexico, Azerbaijan, and I think I'm missing one. Uh, we've got that kind of laid out in a process for the year. And, and you know, we've all seen the outdoor television shows. And and one thing I expressed to, to, to <clears throat> Jake, it is very important to me to kind of tell a true story of duck hunting, not a NASCAR sponsor affected story, but a true story, an honest story of duck hunting. And I believe when you go to Australia and you go to the Netherlands and you start really seeing the impact of anti-hunting and how the decline in hunting has led to a political irrelevance and the antis have gotten a strong foothold, then you begin seeing hunters apologize for what they do, for what we do. And my philosophy is we shouldn't apologize. We shouldn't have to apologize. It, it, it's legal, it's ethical. And we, it, and, but some of the things that, that, Maybe somebody, some hunters would say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Well, I, I believe if it's legal and ethical, it's okay to do. And I believe that we as hunters should just own it. And that's what I want to depict is just an honesty of hunting and the value of hunting, the true value of hunting. You know, trying to explain to a non-hunter how it is that we can go out and shoot something and eat it or not, but shoot it primarily for recreational value is what we do as hunters. It's recreational. It's something we do for fun. But, but trying to explain that to a not an anti-hunter, but a non-hunter of how we are emotionally connected and love this resource and how it gives our life such profound value is what I really hope to depict through this, this, this series with Jake. You know, I, I think as a story, as, as you said, you know, what we do as filmmakers and photographers is tell the story. And I think we have to go back in time, and I hate to beat a dead horse, Ramsey, but I think it's really important for the viewers that are watching this and that are going to watch our our uh, productions should understand that, you know, you went through a life, you went through a very deep life-changing experience when you were 15 you were in a propane explosion i think you were in a you were in your uh your tool in the the uh, garden shed there was a hot water heater in there you were brushing you were you were uh rinsing your brushes off with some gas the door blew shut and it filled the room up and eventually got to the pilot light and, and exploded right that, that's pretty much it it was like it was like the combustion of a carburetor when you turn the ignition and that arc of flame hits the hits the gas vapors i had come home from school my mother had been on me i had a bird dog that had just scratched the door to, to pieces you know and i had to paint it so i went in i went and painted it and it was a metal door oil based paint and i went to clean the brushes and uh don't know if the door blew shut. Don't know if it was shut. Don't know if it was too closed. Whatever the fact was, the vapors collected when the pilot light came on. Boom, it was an explosion. I was lucid. I can remember. I can remember my neighbor coming in and his eyes getting this big when he saw me. I can remember the smoke. I can remember my mama's hysteria. I can remember walking down the driveway. I can remember my neighbors collecting. I can remember them putting me in an ambulance and trying to cover my face with a wet sheet. That wasn't going to happen. I can remember the ride to the ambulance uh, all the way. I can remember my mama crying. I remember telling my mother to call my boss. I was busting tables at Shoney's at the time <laughs> and uh, and told her to call him and tell him I wouldn't be in for work that day. <laughs> I remember being being pushed into the uh, emergency room. And I can remember a nurse. I can remember telling her I was thirsty. There was all this, this action going on around me, nurses and lights and doctors and people flurry. It's a flurry of humanity around me. And I can remember taking a piece of ice and putting it in my mouth. And I can remember the last lucid thought, I can remember them cutting my clothes off. I had on shorts and a t-shirt. I can remember them cutting them off with scissors. And then everything else just drops off into this uh, real dreamlike experience for the next six months, it seemed like. And it wasn't it wasn't medically induced because they, they couldn't. Man, I was uh, 75% second and third degree. And they, they, they needed what skin wasn't burned to grow so they could use skin grafts and they couldn't retard that growth with uh painkillers or anything so it was just full on tough it out man and uh i can remember i told my mother maybe six months after i got out she and i were drinking a cup of coffee and talking and i was sorting through these memories and i remember describing to her a lot of lights and 
doctors rushing in and, and putting those paddles on my body. And I can remember like I was looking down the bed, seeing my body buck. And it just must have been a bad dream. But when I looked up at her, she was crying. And she said, I don't know how you remember that. That's the night they brought you in. You died. And I don't think she ever would have told me that had I not remembered it. And, um, but it, it was a, it was a, I spent six months in a burn center. I think my parents put a down payment on a casket. They said, if he, if he lives, he's going to lose his right arm and both his legs. It was an 8% chance of survivability. And <clears throat> it was just a long road to recovery. It's really what it boiled down to. But, you know, I, it, it was the kind of changing experience that when you're in that spot and you're getting out, and I mean, just when you lay in bed for six months, you can't physically stand. You can't physically lift a two-pound weight over your head when you're just immobile for that duration of time. I think I lost count uh, with – in the 80 somethings of surgeries over the years, nothing, nothing beautification, all just mobility type issues and general health type issues. But, but I did get back and it, and it leaves you hungry. It's like giving a second chance this time. I mean, I understand how fragile life is short in the blink of an eye. Boom. You know, just last week I came home from Thanksgiving. I had a pile of packages in the foyer. I was going through some mail. I was sitting in my office. And I was here by myself, and about that time, somebody started beating my front door down and ringing the doorbell like crazy. And, and all my kids will tell you, I'd tell their friends, don't beat on my front door like the house is on fire. Come up and ring the doorbell and ask to speak to one of the children. Well, somebody was beating my door down, and I opened it up, and the lady goes, your house is on fire. And this was just last week. And, and I go, ma'am, she goes, there's a fire by your garage and something combustion or something. in one of these great big city trash cans had caught fire. Holy moly. Door, and this thing, there's eight foot flames leaping feet from my house. Wow. We got it put out finally. But my point is life short, just in the blink of an eye, boom, something and, changed. And, you know, that's really that really leads us into the title of our project. And, man, I tell you, I get so every time I see it, type it in do a title on a video or a photo or a copy on a post or something on social media. I get soft, Ramsey. I mean, your story is very inspiring to me, and I hope that it is to everyone else. I hope that the productions that we put out there are inspiring to other people because, we're talking about a situation where you come out of this and like you said, duck hunting gave you purpose and direction, which g gave you confidence and you started built to build this brand. And all of a sudden, you know, you and I are talking about a video project. And so what our goal was to take this story, your, your life history, man, I get goosebumps thinking about it. You take this, this life history to begin with, which you've already released the trailer to our, our video project and the name of the video project is life short get ducks and i mean that really encompasses under one umbrella how you feel about all this how everyone should feel about this because most of us take life for granted ramsey we haven't been you know as unfortunate as that was for you fortunately you survived that that event and you i mean man i hate to say this but you had a, a, an opportunity to look at life from a completely different perspective than most of us ever have or ever will because we haven't we haven't faced that kind of adversity before and when you look at it from that standpoint when you're you know when you're when you're us on the outside looking in Look at life like that because life is short. Whether it's get ducks or get trucks or get whatever, life is short. Take like advantage of it. Is whatever. It, it, it's very important. And you know the trailer. The trailer really kind of again. It, it, it's <clears throat> our brand. Getducks.com is 100% organic. I mean, it's just it's literally. I don't have a marketing degree. I'm a forester and a biologist. When I when I evolved out of this system and ended up. <laughs> Boy, in a, in a roundabout way, going to college and majoring in wildlife management and forestry, uh, and and the doors that opened it up. I, I just wanted to work in refuges. I just wanted to be on a piece of property and and, and wear a uniform and make the world a better place. And and this opportunity, uh, a couple of job changes, it, it took a life of its own. We moved on, and I, I just, I really, 
life is short. And when we ended up going down to Australia, I had not told the story like we told the story even then, let alone on the end of the line podcast over three series. I'd never said that. My wife and children never had heard parts of the, I've been married for 25 years. She'd never heard parts of that story. My, my oldest son is 21. He'd never heard parts of that story. They were hanging on the edge of their seat hearing parts. And it was good to tell that kind of stuff, but then we moved on. But you and I were in Australia and man, we got some great footage. We'd gone to several different places. It was an awesome hunt. And it just happened to coincide. I, I remembered the night before the last day, it just, I remembered, you know, I can't forget it. Hey, you know, tomorrow's that day. I think you and I may have talked about it. And you were boxing up all your camera gear and said, Ram, is there anything else? But once this stuff is boxed up, man, I said, yeah, if you don't mind, let me do a little interview. And it, and it was fully, it was fully candid. And I've, I've learned in, in a couple of other places we've been, Jake, I, I don't read script cards. And I'm, I'm a non-scripted guy. So we're going to make this series completely unscripted and raw. And and I think that's really kind of how the message came out so good. It was the fact that it was just setting it up and you saying, okay, well, what do you want to say? And me just going into it 36 years ago today. And that's pretty profound for me that because 36 years ago preceding that take, Man, you know, nobody in my whole world would have dreamed that 36 years later, nearly four decades later, I'd be sitting waist deep in a marsh shooting hardheads in Australia. And we were we were literally we were literally standing by a red gum in a marsh in Australia. And when we did this, it was literally just so the viewers know. 36 years ago to the day that the explosion had occurred. And so we're standing there, you know, you're getting choked up. I'm, I'm like, I'm like on the other side of the camera. I'm, I'm in, I'm in tears. It was hard. It was very, very hard, you know, to listen to, not because probably just because it was so inspiring Ramsey for me. I mean, I, when you, when you, when you roll that out and I capture that on my red, I was so inspired, like, God, man, this is, this project is meant to be, I didn't look at it like, this is a, just a job. This is a, this is like, this is a, a project, pa or a, a passion project. And it became that for me. And I want to make sure that, you know, everything that I do with you, that it comes out that way, because that's what the purpose of this is. Like you said, this isn't just another duck hunting show on the outdoor channel or sportsman's channel. This is a life story. There are people, there was, there's a man in, in Argentina that David that you work with that had a very similar story, not exactly, but uh, there's enough trauma in the story that he went through that we match these things up. And I'm just like, man, you know, this is, this is a, this is a, a truly, it, this is a gift for me and a, in a, in a, it, it's a, it's a gift and a, and a pleasure for me to be a part of this, man. I really want you to know that. Of our, so much of, of our life, I mean, our life experience can be summed in one word, people. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think duck hunting for me and I think for a lot of other people, whether you're shooting ducks or not, is, is just a fact. The greatest people in your life you meet, you meet because of hunting. And and, and I, Amen. I think, uh, I, I think so, so it's an ideal time to tell a story not of duck hunting, but really of people. And uh, not not just Ramsey, but other people, other hunters, the the people we're going to meet along the way, and I think it's a, a just a great opportunity to to, to connect with people and, and tell this story. And I'm I'm uh, I'm really pleased to see it come about, and I've got a, I've read a real clear vision of, of how I want it to be. I want it to be just an honest depiction of duck hunting. I think that'll be a real a real nice story. My own story of getting hurt, you know, telling that story there on year 36. I had been asked dozens of times, you know, what happened, blah, blah, blah. And I just, oh, you know, I got hurt, blah, 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 I moved on. But it's just something you kind of put away. And, you know, that was the first time that I ever said it out loud in that kind of detail. You know, uh, and and it and it and it did choke me up, and I was surprised that I became choked up. 
it, I started thinking about all the love and prayers and people that have supported me and helped me and that are important in my life now in that context, it did choke me up a little bit. And I'm not that kind of, a, I've cried too many tears back when I was a kid in the burn center to cry anymore. Uh, but, but it, it did, it did choke me up. And I've been in this business a long time. And I'll tell you, we are, we organize hunts around the world for people. And I've got clients that'll buy a dozen hunts a year. And I've got clients that'll buy one in a lifetime, but they're, but each hunt, no matter what the person's, uh, respective situation is it, it is a trip of a lifetime of sorts it, it really truly is and you know i've got clients plural a half dozen or more some have just gone to bed one night and never woke up they just they had a blessed life and they went to sleep and i've got i've got clients that uh have, have ended in tragedy and 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 by surprise some of them very young and I've got, when you walk into my camp house, I've got this little short hall and it's just full of eight by 10 photos, me and the kids in different places. But a lot of times there's some of these faces and, and certainly throughout the hard drive of, of my own pictures and stuff. And when I see those people smiling, holding their ducks and sitting in that duck blind around the world, you know, it just occurred to me one day that I get to be a part of the happiest times of their lives because a lot of people have trouble. A lot of people have baggage and, and things going on behind the scenes. You know, we're, we're all as adults, you know, Santa Claus, we all know is a children's myth. You know, now we're, we're grownups and we are Santa Claus and, and, and we have to go to work and we have to pay bills. And we've got bosses we don't like, and we've got situations in our life that add stress. And, you know, what I see a lot of times is, is people plan these trips with us it's kind of like they're they're equate. It's kind of like the conversion of, of a child at Christmas. You know, it's not the actual hunt. It's just I just imagine a guy in a high stress job sitting at a boring desk or something in his life is a barking dog, a nagging wife, a, a bad boss, a horrible job, a mortgage too big, times are tough. But every now and again, he gets to think, I'm, I'm gonna be in Argentina in eight weeks and twelve weeks or whatever like that, and, and it gives him a respite. It gives him something to look forward to, and and you know. And to look at some of those pictures of clients that are no longer with us and just realize, wow, I got to be a part of one of the highlights and the funnest things he ever did. That, that's, a, that's a little bit of responsibility. It's a little scary at times. It's, it's a little, lot of bit of responsibility. It's going to be really fun. awesome to see you guys debut these episodes because part of our responsibility, at least that I feel as a photographer or cinematographer in this industry is to parlay the, the stories behind the scenes. So to be able to see these people go out and like you said, it's not just a duck hunt. This is an experience. So to be able to have Jake show that to the world that what you're doing isn't just a, a booking agency. You're helping people either through some sort of therapeutic trip or just to be able to check a bucket list item off for them is going to be really special. And I think those are the types of things that anybody getting into this industry should look to do because that's going to help revolutionize the, out the perception of the outdoors and help solidify the future of sportsmanship. So these are the yeah. types of projects that, that really need to be harnessed and taken advantage of right now because it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay back dividends in the future. I think I've it brings to radio. I've got a face for radio. I told Jake that right. <laughs> I'm not meant to be on TV, but one thing I made clear to Jake, I said, Jake, I don't want to be the star of a show. I, I'll be the voice. I'll be the constant because I'm going to be on these hunts. But to me, the stars of the show are the guides and the hunters and the species and the habitats and the wetlands of the world. That is, that is what's important to show. I'm just a guy, you know? Well, I think, you know, uh, from my perspective, you know, from a filmmaker and a photographer's perspective, you know, I want to show people, I want to, I want to be able to tell a story, but I also want to be able to take you there. Like if you've never been anywhere and, and, you know, you've duck hunted in Arkansas or Mississippi or West Tennessee your whole life, and you watch one of these, one of these episodes, I want you again, not to be just immersed in the storyline, but also I want you to feel like you're there on the hunt with us so that you can imagine what it's like to be in waist deep water in Australia hunting hardheads or, 
you know, pink ear ducks or in a marsh on a on a dry year in Argentina or, or in a, wherever we are. I want the experience to come out so that you understand this is very common. It's a common denominator. If you're a waterfowl hunter, you know, you might be in a different place and you might have a certain perception about Pakistan that you don't like because you watch the news and they're always talking about, you know, terrorists and bombings and, and how bad these people are. But then when you get into, you know, wherever you waterfowl hunt in Pakistan and you meet up with these people, all of a sudden you're completely blown away by the fact that you're getting along with these people. You're sh and I'm, I'm getting soft here, man, because <laughs> This is that, 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 when you look at life like that, that's when you understand that life is short and that, and, and you're not, you're not taking advantage of the things out there that, that the world has to offer. We get along with people that you thought were your enemies in the world and, and you sit down and you, and you go roast a duck over an open fire in Argentina. Like we did those Brazil. I mean, that was unbelievable. We had, we were, we were on this, uh, this old, you know, beat down ranch with a wooden picnic table and fold out chairs. They brought a tablecloth out. They set, you know, bottles of, of Argentinian wine, which we all know what that means. And they bring these wooden <laughs> cutting boards. Yeah. They bring these Hours wooden of Malbec. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, and, 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 and they bring these wooden, uh, cutting boards out for everyone as plates. We have a fork and a knife. And then you walk over to the, what's that, what's that fire pit thing called that, that kiln looking thing that where they cook those ducks, Ramsey. I have no idea. It was just like, it was like a, it's like a homemade mud oven. Yeah. It was like a kiln, this, this mud like brick. It, homemade. it looked exactly. That's what it could. That's how it would uh, cook your food and it looked like a mud igloo on stilts and they had these these gr you know gray these metal grades in there and you i walked over there Ramsey's like man you gotta come get pictures of this so i walk over there and there's like 36 or 40 brazil ducks all plucked and butterflied open split in half orange feet still on them sticking up <laughs> and they Oh my gosh. I walked over there and my mouth just started. The Pavlov's theory just went into effect immediately, but it's also beautiful. And man, I'm telling you, I almost started crying because I'm standing there going, dude, I'm out in the middle of you nowhere. You have tissues for these uh, oh, trips. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the older I get, the softer I am because I realize hanging out with people like Ramsey, I get to realize how short life really is and what the value of these experiences are. And I go back to my three-year-old days when my dad started taking me duck hunting when I was three years old, dreaming about how am I going to create a life to where I can duck hunt the rest of my life. I wasn't thinking about Australia or Argentina or Azerbaijan or Netherlands or wherever in the world. I was thinking about West Tennessee flooded cornfields and flooded timber in Arkansas. And now here I am many decades later traveling with a guy like Ramsey going to these places and I'm just going I mean this is insane I'm, I'm duck hunting in Australia and it is an experience that if you spent if it caught it, it doesn't it doesn't it's really not that expensive when you start counting the nuts and bolts of these things and the logistics but you save your money and you go on a trip like this you come back going now that was one of the most memorable things I've ever done in my life and you'll carry that to your grave but isn't it, crazy, so isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? You hit. You, you touched on this. Isn't it crazy how the world over, people are just people, and that's what I've seen in my travels. Is that's right. Ninety percent. You know, the news and the media concentrates on the the, the ten the, the ten percent, the five percent each side outlier. Ninety percent of people are just people like us. They're just regular people that like people and share and eat and drink and have a good time and love to do the same thing. And 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 uh, like my bird boy in Azerbaijan last year, he, he he's very poor, even by American standards, even by Azerbaijani standards, he's very poor. And but he was so friendly. He every morning he had a teacup. He had stopped, and his sister or somebody had made cookies. And somewhere during the hunt, he would break out his teacup and pour a cup of tea for me, and uh, let me have my tea first. He just insisted. We didn't want to share a cup. He just would pour mine first and give me some cookies. And even. Uh, Google Translate failed us. We could have one and two word sentence sentence conversations. Yes, no, hungry. That's all we could do. 
but yet we bonded in a way that, that just you never would have dreamed. And I can say that about every country I've been in. 90% of everybody I've ever met, in fact, everybody I've ever met, I think, represents that 90%. They're just people. You go to Pakistan, and, you know, when I was in Pakistan, one of the craziest things that ever happened, I'm in Pakistan, and I'm at the, pouring myself a drink or something, and somebody says, where are you from? And of course, they all spoke great English. And there were a big crowd of guests in there that day, and I said, I'm from Mississippi, and he goes, oh, uh, that's near Louisiana. Do, do you know <laughs> the commander? And I go, <laughs> and, and it didn't care what I knew because the minute somebody said Duck Dynasty, the whole crowd comes around and they start telling Uncle Si stories in Pakistan, you know, and, and you know, as, as, you, as your guest on the outdoor camera experience, to kind of bring this thing back home, you know, I've, I've got this vision, I've got this experience, but the platform of video especially video we can put on social media like this. It, it, it's, a, it's a platform that can really communicate where you can feel it. Words are very, very good in a book if you're imaginative, but it's not real. You know, it, 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 you, you, can't really, you can't really envision that red duckweed over that Australian swamp until you see it. And, and video is walking through it. And, and that's where guys like y'all can give real creative life the fact that jake is a duck hunter and is hunted he anticipates you know i'm just out there doing duck hunting stuff but it's jake he's duck hunted he's duck guided he's a, he's a capable photographer but he anticipates those true moments that that give uh that give this project real solid life you know that people can really sink their teeth into and get it you know, and that's that's what that's what's so good about having talented, good videographers and photographers like yourself. Well, thank you, and and that means a lot coming from you, Ramsey, and and you know that is our goal at the end of the day. And I and Jess, you know, covering whatever she does with her cameras, and what I cover, what I do with my cameras, that is our purpose. I mean, our purpose is to is to find those moments and capture them because those are the ones that really stick out when you can capture a moment that happens spontaneously or if you see it coming and you capture it and people don't know that you're doing it, you're just a fly on the wall and something miraculous happens and you capture it and then you show it, you know, to whoever is there that you want to show it to, that's when it all comes out. That's when emotionally, yeah. that's when it comes out. So and I'm very, very proud of this whole thing. Let's talk about the first, uh, the first episode. Do you want how 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 deep do you want to get into that before you know you release the the, the first episode? It, it's no secret. It's when will I'll, it let, I'll, I'll let you know. tell you. Let's it's let everybody true. know when to expect it first. When are you anticipating the release of this? Pro probably, uh, probably sometime around the Christmas break. I've, I've been thinking I, I would I would have it with when the kids are out of school. And everybody can see it. And Jake and I have had to go back. You know, one of the most discouraging aspects of this whole project that I did not anticipate were the algorithms. Mm. You know, folks, if you don't know this, mainstream media, to include social media, doesn't like this thing of ours. They don't like guns. They, they, our story doesn't conform to their narrative. And so... There's Big the, Brother. Somebody's watching every single thing. You put up. Let's hold on. Let hold on. Let's let's hold on. Let's soften that a little bit. They're scared of it. Okay. They, scared some of people it. may or may not. They're scared of. They're scared of exposing it to people that don't like it. Is in my opinion because they're still allowing us to show certain things, but they are scared of the repercussions of getting it out there. And the best thing, if everyone listening right now. Can, can understand this. I know you can hit your share button because that overrides the algorithms and takes it to another level. If you share it, no one can stop it. So share. And, and the interesting thing that it, and it hurt, it hurt, man. It hurt my feelings because we went live with this little two minute trailer. That was my personal testimony. And we had on there, uh, get ducks.com presents. And in the first 24 hours, it was 50,000. I mean, it was going through the roof. And all of a sudden, 
it's like the brakes on a train sparks flying. It just came to a grinding halt. And, and I received a message that uh, I was in the timeout box. I wasn't, they didn't delete it. They didn't do this, but they made it clear that they had put the screw to the algorithm that this thing. And I asked why I went back and forth very politely on the appeal. And it, and it had to do with a landing page. And that landing page was the fact that when you went from the video saying getduck.com led people, compel people to go to a website, that when you went to it, promoted by way of an advertisement or a, a Benelli logo, boom, promoted the sale of guns. And, and that's not good. So now Jake and I've had to go back and take the dot .com portions out and everything. And that's true. That, we don't need that. You know. We don't need the dot com. We need Ramsey Russell presents life short, get ducks. So, and, and, and I think we're going to probably come back one day and redo the trailer that way and release it because it's, it's not just applicable to the first installment. It, it could be keep on going in perpetuity, but that's right. That, that, uh, that was very disappointing that, that big brother cranked the algorithm down on the first trailer. And it was, it was just taking a life of its own. And it's still doing pretty good, but nothing like it would have done. But the first, the first episode will be Australia. It runs about eight minutes. It gives you a very good insight of the people and the food and the camaraderie and the habitats and the birds. And, and probably over the Christmas break, uh, when I know all the kids are out of school, is probably when we'll time the release of that. Awesome. Well, we will be looking forward to it for sure. Um, I've gotten a few little sneak peeks in and I get to sh Jay share some of the content with me. So, um, I mean, I already know it's going to be spectacular. Oh, I'm, I'm proud of it. Jake did a really good job. I couldn't be prouder. Well, I really appreciate, you know, I really appreciate the, the opportunity to be a part of all this because, you know, it allows me to, I mean, I get to experience these things. I'm not, I don't shoot when I'm there, although I did get to shoot a few does while I was there, but I don't shoot while I'm there, but I have the opportunity to capture all this and it's very captivating for me. And I mean, like, like we talked about before, you know, we have little shorts, we have little outtakes that we do where you, you might sit there. We'll take like, say the main four or five species that we shoot in Australia and you'll do a little outtake on each species, what they do, how they react, you know, what's special about them. You display the colors, the wings, all that stuff. And those things are very captivating for me because I've always, you know, you get you get you get tunnel vision when you're hunting mallards and because they react the way that they do and they, they live in the environments that they do. And we all love that. And, and that's great. But when you look at these other species like 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 the Pacific black duck. I mean, these ducks react to quacks. They, they, they act just like mallards. They sound just like mallards and they hunt just like mallards. And I found that to be, again, I'm sort of tonal visioned into that, but I found that, uh, you know, a, a very special, a special oh, experience yeah. that I had. And, you know, I encourage, uh, we can, I guess we can talk about this. We'll see if the algorithms kill us on this show, but you know, you can get over you, watch for these these trailers the short outtakes the 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 main episodes um uh, ramsey's where are you going to post them ramsey how are you going to how are you going to show these I'm, right now right now i've got them i've got them on uh, instagram tv and facebook uh youtube and then i've, I've, I've built a gallery at what's your handle for these is it just get ducks that's a good uh instagram is ramsey russell get ducks Facebook is getducks.com. YouTube, I think is getducks.com. And then getducks.com, the website, I built a, I built a uh, actual uh, module where I'm going to load them up as we, as we go post them, I'll put them on getducks.com and it'll on a mobile site. Cause 80% of our traffic is coming in mobile. Now y you can scroll down and you'll see, you'll better see the videos right on your phone from there. So there's many ways to get to it. And we'll be email blasting these things, you know, because we've got a lot of clients, that love the story that they don't play on the internet. They just Do you have don't. a newsletter sign up on your site? Can people go and sign up for your emails? They can, they should. Yeah, they should. So that we can send it to them if they're, if they're wanting those updates. If you guys want to know right away, go to get ducks.com, sign up for the newsletter and you will yeah. be some of the first people to see links when these episodes and the shorts come out. But, but I'm you, don't freak out if you don't get a lot of emails because we don't send, but about maybe a half dozen to 10 a year. I, I can't stand uh, getting one every week. <laughs> uh, you know, they usually end up in my trash box. Uh, we, we send a few a year. 
and we're shooting everything in red. So, you know, and everything is cinematic. Um, every, it looks great. We're in these really cool environments. Um, and, and you're going to see photos pop up while we're on these trips. Like as soon as we get into a Wi-Fi, everyone's on their phones. You know, I'll share, I'll share, we'll take a handful of photos. We'll share them with the group that we're in and these things start coming out. One of the fascinating things, you know, the first trip we did was Australia. One of the fascinating things that I found uh, in terms of a reaction was how quickly that spread throughout the, the duck hunting and the hunting wow. community while we were in Australia. Holy moly. It was like, you know, we took over the internet <laughs> and it was, <laughs> it was fascinating. And that told me right there that people were interested in this. They were fascinated by the species we were hunting. They could, they could see clearly see that there was common denominators. I mean, there's guys in Australia running Excel boats, um, uh, mud motors, mud motors, yeah. I mean, they had, you know, badass trucks, <laughs> badass trailers. I mean, they were ready to roll, man. And yeah. and I was, I was, you know, that were there was an immediate connection because of that. And and every place we've gone since then, every place we're gonna go, I anticipate that common denominator. I can't say that enough. How how we have to look at this on a worldly scale, like man, we're all in this together. Doesn't matter if they're from Pakistan, Argentina, Australia, Alaska, whatever. We're all in this together, and it's a, it's a, I think it's a, it, it brings the world together in the hunting community like nothing, nothing ever has. It's unlike th anything you've ever seen. And I think that, um, you know, it's important. It's not just an entertainment value. I think this is important to the world. I really do. I think what people are going to, benefit the most from is obviously everyone's going to connect on this waterfowl uh, common denominator like you're saying everyone's going to see things that they recognize or see things that they can connect with but on the flip side there's going to be individual stories throughout all of these episodes that's going to be the deeper thing that you're going to be able to pull from this so that's going to be cool everybody watch and my and my wife is saying she is saying some of the footage and she's a she's in the hunting business she's my partner she's the brains of the operation i'm just the good looks but she, <laughs> the uh as a non-hunter, and she has shot done a little bit of hunting, but really as a non-hunter, she's enjoyed the the she enjoyed the cinematic aspect of it. She's enjoyed it. I mean, I think it's something not just for hunters. I think other people might enjoy it. There's not it's not heavy to the boom, 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 strap them part of it. It's, it's a lot more B-roll and just the moments in hunting, not just the hunt itself that I think is so important. And and Jake, I just got to give you credit, man. We were down in Argentina, Jeff shooting doves one afternoon and uh i said i was tired of shooting i said here you go jake why don't, why don't you shoot a few i didn't know jake was a hunter i didn't know he'd been a duck guy i, I knew he's a hunter but i didn't know he'd been a duck guy and done all this stuff and i give him my gun he's like 20 20 doves with 21 shots i'm like give me my gun my own gun man uh -huh. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's, I hired the right cameraman. <laughs> well, I remember as a kid, you know, like I said earlier, thinking about how am I going to how am I going to direct my life and, and purpose in life so that I can duck hunt or not just duck hunt, deer hunt and hunt you know, as a, as a professional and do what I do and, 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 and do this for the rest of my life. And fortunately for me, there are people like you out there that have situations that, that, that require, you know, photography and cinematography. And I think all these, all these guys like Rock House Motion, Rock Road Creative, Kana Outdoors with Ben Potter, all these brands that are using these filmmakers and producers that are, that have taken this to the next level. They're telling the right stories. It's not just, you know, a bunch of blood and guts and piles of birds and, and a piled up deer. There's their, their life stories. Yeti's done a great job. Sitka, you know, and, and Tangle Free starting to do it now. It goes on and on. And I think, you know, it's taken this to another level. And there are people that appreciate what we do now, unlike what it used to be even five years ago when, when the production values weren't as high as they are now. And I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Ramsey. I really appreciate you. You could have picked a lot of people to do this. And it was a gift to me that you chose me. And, and I'm really, I feel very fortunate that I'm a part oh, of this. Yeah. This is going to be cool, man. Good. 
Well, we're running low on time. So we should, um, everybody, again, if you want to follow uh, Ramsey Russell on Instagram, it is, uh, give us your handle again. Ramsey Russell, get ducks. Ramsey Russell, get ducks. Uh, you can go to his website, getducks.com. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, keep an eye out for these. I think he says sometime around Christmas, they're going to start debuting the the series and the, the trailers. So it's going to be uh, definitely share, 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 share. There's going to be a lot of value in this, not just as if you're not a hardcore duck hunter, doesn't matter. You're going to get something out of these. That's right. Life short, get ducks. This is Ramsey Russell's Waterfowl Odyssey, man. Yep. Well, thank you so much for spending the morning with us and um, sharing your story with us. I know it's personal, but it's important for people to see where you've come from and where you're going. And it's uh, it's it's awesome that you shared that with us. Thank you, Ramsey. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming yeah. on. That went by really fast. It did. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess we will we'll say goodbye to you, Ramsey. We'll close out this show. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And um, hopefully we can have you back on as your series or your episodes are developing and we can dive into it a little further. As, as Thank you all very out. much. I enjoyed it. All right. Take care. Catch you later, bud. All right, Jake, we are at the end. What'd you get out of that, Chess? Tell me, tell me as a, as a, you know, you're not an outsider looking in because you're, you know, you and I are close and I share content with you because I always like to get your, your approval and your, your comments My on approval. things. What do you, <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. You do high quality work, girl. Thank so what, what do you, what'd you get out of this conversation? Um, I'm just, I'm really excited to see the reactions to these just because I know they're like, Obviously, there's the waterfowl. So anyone who's interested in waterfowl is going to enjoy this, but it's going to be the underlying messages. And I just really think that as a photographer, a cinematographer, if you're able to share the imagery, but share it in a way that you connect with it, not just like put the video camera up and take what's happening, but to be able to sequence it together and to find the details, to share the story and those moments that really stick inside your soul when you're out there, like that's what people need to see. So I'm just, I know that that's going to happen and that's important to me. I want people, sometimes you may, you may feel this or you may not, but you know, you feel misunderstood sometimes as a hunter and just like Ramsey said, there's no reason we should have to apologize for what we love, but it's hard to convey why we love it to someone who hasn't experienced it. But these types of productions can kind of open up the door to get people to, to lean in and maybe want to to understand it a little better. And that's going to be just beneficial in so many ways. So that's, that's what I'm going to get out of it. It's just helping along that path. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, uh, elaborating on what you said, I think that's what makes me so proud of this because this is one of those things that, you know, the story lives on forever. Um, it's, it's a, it's a human, it has human element to it. You know, I think as, pr as a producer and a, an executive producer, that, that Ramsey is on this, you know, we worry about sponsorship. We want people to just see it for what it is and come in and, you know, and offer us sponsorships because, because we believe in this and it has a story unlike anything else. And sometimes I have to sit back and go, you know, this really isn't just about sponsorships. I, th I do believe in it and I believe that those things are going to come. But I also think that, like I said, this is a passion project um, it's turned into a very, a, a story that it really, it, it's a, a dot connector and it goes from one location to the next and it connects these dots between humans that, that have had similar experiences or share common denominators. And, you know, I think, I think Ramsey and I are on the same page with that. That's what we think is the, the attractant to it. And um, I can't wait uh, for, I've been, I've been chomping at the bit. I've had this Australia video done for, a, a while now and and he's you know he's a he's a time he's a very detail oriented guy Ramsey is one of my favorite people he you know we're we've just really become friends over the last year we've gained a lot of trust with each other when you travel internationally you know those kinds of things happen they either go right or they go wrong and things have gone th things have gone right for Ramsey and I and so I trust him on the timing of all this, but I'm really looking forward to the first one coming out and starting this series uh, and rolling it out uh, for everyone to see. Definitely. Well, uh, you will be traveling 
heavily coming up. So we might be having some breaks here and there over the holidays as well. Um, but we will keep you guys posted on the next episodes and the next happenings. Uh, get in touch with us. Let us know what you want to see. We've been getting some messages and some suggestions from you guys, which is really cool. Um, make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and uh, you'll be able to see all of our archived episodes. And I'm going to say it online so that I definitely do it. We will be looking into getting this up on a podcast because there have been more than a few who just want the audio. Uh, we will get it up there soon and I'll let you know when it happens. And they want the audio so they can listen to it while they're in their vehicles driving yes. or listen to it anytime. So I mean, yeah, I we're know gonna you try all to... want to see these faces, but we will get you <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that face, not, my, not this one. <laughs> But yeah, th and thank you, everyone. We've had a lot of really positive comments. We've had lots of praise and and all those and, and kudos. And you know, if 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 we didn't have viewers and the number of viewers that are watching this show on here, uh, watching it the way you guys are, we wouldn't. You know, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have that kind of traction. So thank you guys very much. And tell your friends. Keep bringing people here. We really we yeah, really want want to build this. Share button. That's right. All right. Well, Jake, have a good one and I'll catch you next time. Bye, Jess. Bye, Jake.